Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have eight new shore living DIYs using the Dollar Tree beach items. You guys know this is my favorite time of year. I'm so excited to craft with these new items they have this year with the shore living line. So these are new, the little glass floats. They're not actually glass, they're made out of plastic which makes it a little bit better. And I'm gonna use three of the turquoise and two of the clear for this. Um, you can use whatever you can find. I kind of wanted two different colors and I wanted an odd number. You could do like three, five, seven, any of that would look really good, I think. So I'm just gonna leave them as is, they are perfect. I have a scrap piece of Dollar Tree rope that I'm gonna use for this project. And I'm going to kind of loop it like this so one end is longer than the other and then just simply tie it on itself there at the top. That can be the hanger and it can have two little ropes hanging down. Now to attach the little fishing floats to the uh, rope, I'm just using Dollar Tree twine. It's going to blend in with the rope and the twine that's already on these. And I can kind of stagger like clear turquoise, you know, like that. Um, two on one side and three on the other. So I just simply tie the twine, um, tying it on um, just about an inch um, down from where I have it knotted off at the top. And then I can put the second one down here towards the bottom. I want to hang them where they're all kind of like staggered, but it also looks like they're all hanging with rope, um, which is why I use the rope for the base. Now for this side, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go turquoise, clear, turquoise. They also have royal blue for this, if that's kind of more your color scheme, but definitely look for these. I know they are going fast in the stores that I've been in. Um, they're so cute. I did not see these online, I don't think. Um, otherwise, I probably would have ordered a case of them. So I'm just kind of estimating where to tie these off. I'm going to tie all three and then kind of see how it hangs. I want it to look like a bunch of little glass fishing floats hanging together for my wall. So easy and so cute. So I tied this one towards the bottom, kind of testing it out. It hangs like way lower than the rest of them. So I'm going to move it up a little bit and um, see if that hangs a little bit better. But this cannot be any easier. I have bought as many of these as I possibly can because I think these would make an awesome coastal Christmas tree with um, little ornaments, right? That looks way better. Let me show you how it looks hanging up. So simple, all you need is a little bit of rope and five of the fishing floats to do it exactly the way that I did it but they're all just kind of hanging randomly. The rope, um, it looks like they're all hanging by rope, even though that would be kind of hard to tie them up like that, but the twine worked perfectly for that. And how cute are these? Good job, Dollar Tree, I really love these. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and comment your favorite DIY below. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna take some of the Dollar Tree burlap, some of their sand dollars, three of them, and one of the long board signs. You could use really any kind of board sign you could find from the Dollar Tree. Um, again, I wanna work with an odd number on the sand dollars. And so I think three will fit on this size sign well, but the reason you can use anything is because I'm gonna cover it with burlap anyway, but I do like the like light wood frame on that one. So this is just Dollar Tree burlap. I guess you could probably use some of the printed one if you wanted. I kind of wanted simplicity on this project, um, but I'm gonna have to kind of iron it first to um, be able to have a flat piece of burlap because the way they have it rolled up. So I'm just gonna kind of iron this section and cut off what I need to cover the back of that sign. Anytime you do like a burlap with like a white starfish, um, sand dollar, whatever, looks so coastal, it looks so pretty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off a little bit more than I need. And then I'm gonna measure my sign so I can kind of, 
I want it to be like raveled at the edges, like, you know, like real burlap does. So um, I kind of like that. So I'm going to kind of pull off the string there to kind of make it look raveled. And then um, kind of trim it a little bit because it was a little bit uneven for my first side. And I'll show you the trick that I use to cut burlap really easily. Um, this one, I'm just going to be able to kind of trim it. But for the next one, I'm going to pull a strand. So if you lay it on there and kind of figure out where exactly you want to cut, find that individual strand of burlap, grab a hold of it, and just yank it out. Just a great trick for cutting burlap. And ever since I learned this technique, I always do it because then it gives you a little path right there to cut. So just going to cut all the way up. It's going to give me a straight line. And that looks really cool. So I'm going to do the same thing here at the top, just pulling my strand and cutting this off. Now, I don't want you to be able to see any glue or anything like that um, with the burlap. So I'm actually going to use Mod Podge to secure it. And so I'm just going to Mod Podge on the back of the sign. This sign's really pretty. I mean, you could probably get away without the burlap, but you know, I like textures <laughs> on my DIYs. And this is gonna be a great coastal DIY that can go anywhere in my home because you guys know I have every room <laughs> done in coastal because, hey, I live at the beach, why not? Now, um, I just put a nice coat of Mod Podge all over and then just laid the burlap on there. Just gonna use a paper towel to kinda um, dry that off. And have you guys seen the new, like, um, you see that little paintbrush that I use, the paint sponge? They have those, like, in little variety packs with all different kinds of paintbrushes now at Dollar Tree. It's new. I've never seen them before, but I think it's a good deal. Now, for the hanger, I'm going to want to switch it to vertical. It was horizontal before, and I always save these little hangers off of the Dollar Tree signs when I don't use them. And so that is what I'm going to use. I just find the center. It has a plenty thick frame that I can screw into, no problem. And just trying to get it centered on there so it's going to hang, right? But whenever I can use like a real hanger like this, I'm going to try to do it. Just going to make it look a little bit more professional. So I just screwed that into the back, trying to get it in there all the way. And then we can go ahead and decorate this with sand dollars. So we have the great base. These sand dollars are great. They're not real sand dollars. They're like, I don't know if they're made out of what, resin or plastic, but they're great for crafting because they're not going to break. And um, they actually are not that gray tint this year. So I picked up a whole case of these online. Um, I have my Dollar Tree link in the description below. If you'd like to pick up a case, I still think that they're available by the case. I don't know if the starfish are. A few things have been added, a few things deleted, I think. And then I kind of want them evenly spaced out. So this is about 16 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and mark about 8 inches here. And then I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do um, like every 4 inches. Then I thought that wouldn't be too good. So I'm going to do like 4 and a half inches on both sides and just put a dot there. I think I can kind of do the measurement the other way just by eye. And all I'm going to do is simply hot glue the little sand dollars down. I'm going to start with the center one. I kind of like them with like the long slot there pointing down on these. But how cute is that? I'm going to do the same thing here with the other two. This uh, DIY really doesn't need a lot of fuss. It's just going to be a sand dollar like plank board sign. And... I love the skinny signs like this because you can kind of just put this anywhere. My house has like a lot of like skinny walls and areas because it's not like a big house by any means. And this is going to be great. I think I might put this maybe in a bathroom. I think that would look really good. And just gluing those on. So cute. So easy. Just a fun idea you can use these little sand dollars for. Again, I used um, two items from the Dollar Tree, the sand dollars and the sign, plus the burlap. So super inexpensive. It looks really high end. And I just loved crafting coastal again. You guys know this is my jam. So expect 
tons of shore living coastal videos over on in this channel. Isn't that so cute? Okay, for the next DIY, I'm going to use one of their new like charms. These are so pretty. I'm going to use the sea turtle, one of the new Dollar Tree canvases, and then just a plain frame from the Dollar Tree because I want to frame the canvas. I always think they look better like that. And this is such a pretty print. Isn't this so pretty? Somebody posted in our Facebook group. I think they may, might have put mm, a starfish or a sand dollar on this. I can't really remember. And I loved it. So when my store finally got to living, I was sure to grab some of these. Now it almost fits exactly in that frame. That would be great, but I think it would break the frame to force it in there. So let's just go ahead kind of, instead of like a reverse canvas, we are just going to have to cut the um, canvas off by using a razor blade. I couldn't find my good one, so I'm going to use this one from the Dollar Tree. And yes, I have a Band-Aid on my finger there. I had a little crafting injury making these. Cut myself with scissors. Darn it. Um, and then I am just going to cut these off. This blade is a little lightweight. So getting the corners where it's kind of like um, doubled up was a little bit tricky. I'm trying to snip it down with scissors if I can. Um, whatever I can do to avoid having to take all those staples out because as you can see, they have it stapled down well. Now, since it almost fit in there, I really only need the front part of the canvas. So I don't really have to worry about cutting it on the sides or anything like that. But I just want to free it. It kind of looks like burlap, the color, but it's a canvas and then it has like all the white coral on there. So pretty. So I'm just kind of using the fold line from the canvas as reference of where to cut it down. And then I could always trim it more um, because this is probably going to make it just a little bit too big. But I'm so excited to use that sea turtle there. They have those starfish, sea turtles, sand dollars, and oh, a seashell. And they're so pretty that I ordered a second case of them because I love them. And I that reminds me, it's in my Dollar Tree. I need to go pick it up. So just testing out the size of my canvas um, and just kind of trimming it down to make sure it fits. It doesn't have to be perfect because... The wood background on this sign actually is pretty close to the same color as the canvas. So um, I don't think you'll be able to tell if I don't get it cut perfectly. To attach it, I'm going to just simply Mod Podge it down. But I want to do something uh, about the frame first. I don't like the unfinished frame on these signs from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to give it a little makeover with some paint and some stickers. This is the Cloudless Color by Apple Barrel. I get this on Amazon. I have it linked in my Amazon shop below. Um, and um, it's also available at Walmart. Perfect beachy color. It's one of my very favorites. I use it all the time. And the great thing about getting it on Amazon is you can still get it for like 50 or so cents and get it free shipping with Prime. So why not? Anytime I can avoid a trip to Walmart, that is going to be the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> So I'm just using a um, little sponge um, from one of those craft kits at Dollar Tree, I think. And I am just painting the frame. I didn't really want to paint the inside of the frame because that actually has like wood on it. But I was getting some on there. So I'm just going to kind of um, kind of go with it, kind of make it look distressed inside. But what I want to do is try to paint that raw wood. It's kind of hard to paint because since it's that like MDF material, not real wood. It really soaks the paint up. But I usually go for a coastal farmhouse vibe, so I'm not going to want it to look perfect anyway. Um, so I just going to get it the best that I can. And I want to um, texture it. So I thought some of these stickers from the Dollar Tree would be cute. And I'm lucky enough to find some that were the exact color that I want, the light blue. But if you can't find the exact color that you want, you could always paint them. I've done that before. I'm going to line it up so it actually covers the hole for the hanger. So it kind of serves two purposes there. And I'm trying it first just to use the sticker. Um... They're not really strong in the stickers, but I thought I would at least try it first and 
spoiler on the painted surface that's just really not strong enough to keep it on there. Um, some projects like plastic and stuff that I've used these on, it is strong enough the adhesive on these, but for this, um, it's freshly painted too, so that might have something to do with it. So I am gonna have to hot glue these down, which I didn't really want to do at first, but you know what? I want it to stay on because this piece turned out absolutely gorgeous. It turned out better than I even expected that it could. It was so pretty. But I love this look. It just takes that frame from the Dollar Tree and makes it look so much more high end. I even like like the shininess of the blue. So I'm actually going to leave it like that. Uh, if you can't find the blue and you want to do the same project, you could always paint yours blue. I think it would still look pretty. Um, you're just going to have to make sure you do a thin coat of hot glue my um, Ryobi like shoots out a lot so you might be able to see the excess hot glue when you paint it so if you have more of a detail oriented glue gun I would suggest that so you can get a thinner line there to glue that down but as you can see you can just kind of pull these apart get whatever length you want to customize this and we are just going to go all the way around I was really happy that it was able to cover up the hanger on the top of this because instead of a hanging sign, I'm going to make this into a standing sign. Um, I have like little bookcases, I guess, on each side of my TV and I kind of use them as built-ins since I don't have built-ins in this house and I love things like this that can sit on the shelves. It looks so pretty. So just finishing up my last row here, and then we can go ahead and attach the canvas, the turtle, and I even make a stand for this. So this was a little bit more of a time consuming project today. A lot of these were super easy. A couple of them are a little bit more intensive, but you know what? It was worth it because it turned out so pretty. So here is the canvas with all the coral in there. You know, I picked up two of this particular one. There's another variety too, and I might have to see if I can get some more. Um, I think I've got enough Shore Living items, but there's a few items like the Message in the Bottle, the Driftwood Wind Chime, stuff like that that I have not seen yet in the store. And I just put a coat of Mod Podge down and glue the canvas down inside. And you can see how pretty that looks with a frame. And those like square signs like that from the Dollar Tree, one of my favorite sizes because almost all of the Dollar Tree canvases that are so pretty um, are the same size. So great way to frame them out. Here is the turtle. I don't need the wood bead garland or the tassel, but I can save those because they're pretty. So I'm just gonna trim off my turtle. It's like an unfinished ceramic turtle with a beautiful texture. And since it's white, I think I'm gonna leave it white. Um, I do wanna fill in the hole there where it was connected to the wood bead garland. And I just do that with a little spackle, which is the same color, texture, um, as the turtle so that worked out really well and I kind of texture it with a little Cricut meter to kind of give it that dotty feel that the rest of the turtle has so it's not too obvious that I patched that super easy and then I can just um, dry it I like it I really don't think I need to seal it or anything I think I can use it as is and I want it to look like the little sea turtle is swimming past the coral like under the sea I think that looks really pretty. We're like right about there. So I'm just gonna simply hot glue it as is. I'm not gonna do anything else to it. Um, I can't wait to craft with these things. I love them. They're just the perfect size for crafting. So I'm hot gluing it. I want him to kind of look like he's swimming upward there. And even though it's kind of heavy, I think it will stay in place. I got it glued on there pretty well. Now I told you I wanted to make this a standing sign, so I need to figure out a way to do that. I'm thinking just with some Dollar Tree craft wood would be perfect. Really anything that you could find. Um, I want it to be just a tiny bit wider than the canvas, so I'm actually gonna cut mine down just a little bit, but just something heavy duty that's gonna provide a nice space. It's gonna be easy to attach to this wood frame. So I just cut this down, give it a light sanding, 
and I want it to kind of blend in with the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it with the cloudless color um, to make it match. I'm not going to use any of the stickers or anything on it though. I kind of want to leave that um, beautiful jewel design just for the border. So I'm just going to paint the top and the sides that you can see there um, just to provide a little base. A quick easy way to make like a standing sign and it should be really easy to attach because I can just um, glue the frame like right on top of this. So that would paint pretty well. One coat really is all that's necessary. And so I'm just going to dry that real quick and then we can attach it. Isn't this so pretty? I just love how this turned out. So to secure it, I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue on the bottom of the frame here. Stand it up on our craft wood and make sure it stays in place. And I kind of noticed that the outside of my frame, you know, where um, that like wood kind of soaks up the paint kind of made it um, not the greatest. So I'm going to kind of touch up the outsides because I think you might be able to see that with just a little bit more paint. But I want to make sure I don't really get any on the stickers as well. So I'm going to kind of just touch up all the way around anywhere that kind of needed it, including like kind of like that inside edge there um, where I didn't really want to paint, but I kind of ended up painting a little bit just to make all of the frame blue. And that made it look a lot better because it was a little rough there for a second. But I think that looks absolutely beautiful. Here is the final product. Our little sea turtle swimming through a coral. Here is a close-up image so you can see all of the beautiful details on this. You would never guess this was made with just a few items from the Dollar Tree. It really looks high end and like something that I bought at a home decor store. Isn't that so pretty? I love that sea turtle. I'm going to be using that lots, I'm sure. Hey guys, if you'd like to connect on social media, I do have a private Facebook group link below. I would love to have you. I'm also really active on Facebook um, with my page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And I would love to have you on any and all of those. Now back to the DIYs. A lot of you guys asked me what I was going to do with the new glass beach frames. These are so beautiful. And what I said to you guys was a lantern. Perfect for a lantern. They're made out of glass. They have a frame. And I think this turned out so cute. It was so easy. So I chose four of the seahorses. I bought a whole case online. <laughs> Um, so that's why I have a lot, but you could always mix it up. Um, there's also a mermaid tail that's vertical. The sea turtle is kind of more horizontal, but I guess you could do it with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use all four of these. The seahorse design on these are beautiful. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the twine hanger. I'm not really going to worry about the staple. Um, if I were to remove it, I might damage the frame and it doesn't really interfere with anything. So I'm just going to pull the twine out. The frame on these is made out of like a plastic. I was hoping it would be wood. And so I'm going to use a battery operated candle because I don't know how well it would hold up to a real candle. Then I picked up a piece of the Dollar Tree craft wood. Um, it's just about the right size. If you get one of the longer ones like this, the square one might be a little small. And I'm just going to start lining this up how I would set a lantern. One side will be slightly longer than the other for me to be able to form the corner like that. But I'm going to go ahead and start mapping this out, right? I'm going to have it like that. Um, so I'm just going to use an ink pen to kind of mark where I need to cut the board. I'm going to have to go ahead and set up the other side as well. So I can make sure that I get a straight cut when I use my saw to cut this down. And I'm just gonna take this over to my saw, cut that down, we're gonna have a nice square piece for the bottom, and it's heavy duty just being made out of real wood like that, right? Now, I don't really want it to stand out being just the raw wood like that. The rest of the frames are white. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that just on top, just to kind of make it blend in with the rest of the lantern. But I cannot believe 
how easy this lantern DIY was. Definitely the easiest one I've ever made. Um, these little glass beach frames are perfect for this. I'm loving all of the new Shore Living Beach items. There's a few items that I'm sad that they didn't bring back, like the mermaids and stuff like that. Hopefully um, you guys still have some leftover in your stashes from the last two years. I know I do. Um, but there's a few items that I'm looking for that I have not found yet. But I'm hoping for sure that they come back. So it was like real wood. So I had to do a couple coats of white to kind of make that um, kind of blend in with the perfect white frames that we're going to be attaching to that. But I just want to paint those and get those dry. Now we can start putting it together. It was so easy. This craft wood from the Dollar Tree um, is really thick, so I'm going to be able to use it to just attach it with hot glue. Now you're going to have to be quick on most of this because it sets up rather quickly. And I just glue the bottom of the frame. Um, one side matches, so make sure you get it lined up with the right size that you cut it down to size with. And then I just went ahead and did the other one on the other side, gluing that on with hot glue too, trying to keep like 90 degree angles if I can. Um, but when I attach the side pieces, that's when you will kind of align everything. So kind of the most important part on this one. So I'm just gonna lay it on its side like that. I'm gonna do hot glue down both sides of the frame and the bottom. This part you have to act really quick. I did not get mine aligned perfectly at the top before it's set up. So make sure you kind of um, get that lined up perfectly because by the time I noticed that mine was off a tiny bit, my hot glue was already set up and I did not want to have to try to destroy everything by taking it back apart. So we're just going to kind of make it work. And since you have to work quickly, you're going to have like a little hot glue seeping out, but you know, easy enough to clean up with a little bit of heat and scraping it off um, to kind of give you a more finished look. But again, you are gonna have like one side of your lanterns a little bit longer so you can get that perfect corner. But I think it'll work like that. So let's go ahead and do the other side. Um, you can kind of see there where I didn't get it perfectly on the top, but pretty close. So this one, I'm gonna be more careful. Um, hot glue down both of my frames. It is plastic, the frames. It didn't seem to melt with my hot glue, so that's good. And then I just lay my fourth panel on there. Isn't that a perfect lantern? I think it's better for a lantern than it is for even hanging. I mean, I guess it would be pretty in front of a window. Um, we'll see what else I do with these. <laughs> and I just lay that one on there. I got this one lined up perfectly, so that's good. That can be the front of my lantern and just peeling off any excess hot glue that kind of had seeped out the edges to make it look nice and clean. Could not be any easier. One of the easiest DIYs I've ever made, even though there was a little bit of construction because you do have to cut the bottom piece to size. But look at that, isn't that so cool? So after I'm getting it all cleaned up, I can just add my candle. I'm using a candle from Walmart just because it's brighter and larger. And it kind of looks like it's real because it's got like the flickering candle and it looks like um, it's made out of like real wax. And here's a little close up of our lantern. This beautiful seahorse and coral design. Pop my candle in there. This would be great for indoors or outdoors. It's nice and large, so I think I'll use this maybe out in my Florida room. This looks so beautiful on my shell table out there and an easy way to light up. This is a timer candle, so I can actually have it automatically come on every night. So that is a plus, but this is how it turned out. My little seahorse lantern. I think it's beautiful. What do you guys think about this DIY? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Now these are new this year, this home sign. Um, it seems that they've switched up the shore living signs every year. The only thing I don't like about them is that they're too skinny. So I'm just gonna take a random long sign that I have. I think this is left over from 4th of July last year. And I'm just gonna use that to double up the sign to make it thicker. Therefore, it's gonna make it better because I don't like the thin bowie signs if I can avoid them. I'm gonna go ahead and save the rope detail though. I like that. So I'm just pulling that off the back, trying not to damage anything. And we can thicken this sign up. 
Of course, I want to replace that like shell on there. It's made out of paper. Like it's really bad. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hanger on this sign and on the other sign. They're almost exactly the same size, so I think this is going to make it work. One thing I did notice was that the holes for the hanger um, were in different places. So that's interesting. So I, um, I think I can solve that pretty quickly by kind of sandwiching the hanger in between. So I'm just going to use some of the thin twine from the Dollar Tree and tie a knot um, and thread that through. I'm going to double tie it because it's kind of a thin twine. And a lot of you guys have been asking me where I got my twine keeper. That is Dollar Tree. They're the yarn keepers they have right now. Um, I love them. They work great. They keep my twine um, ready to go and clean on my work desk. So win, win. So as you can see, I'm just going to kind of sandwich that through. I knotted it in the front. It's thin enough that I can kind of hide it between the two signs and sandwich it in there. I'm going to put hot glue on my back sign. Could be any sign, doesn't matter because you're not going to be able to see it. And lay my home sign right on top. That made it the perfect thickness. A lot of the Dollar Tree signs have gotten thicker, but these haven't. So um, I really needed that extra um, depth and it was worth sacrificing a sign for because it made this sign so much better. I love the paint on this. It looks distressed. The color is perfect. I don't think I have to do anything to the home sign except for just removing that terrible shell. <laughs> now to add a decor, we're going to replace it with one of the wall charms. They have these again this year. These are the wood wall charms. I'm just going to carefully remove the hanger from the back and you have a perfect um, shell. It's painted white distressed to make it look like it's made out of kind of like wood or I guess it kind of gives it that natural shell look. These are so great for DIYs. I love these. The shell one is probably my favorite. And I'm just going to put hot glue on the back all the way around. And look how much better that looks than that metal um, paper shell that was on there before. So I just kind of glue that in place, trying to clean up any excess hot glue that might have seeped out there. Um, but it's the perfect size for this sign. And this looks so good and it was so easy to do. I thought about framing it out with some Dollar Tree rope and you could totally do that. Um, I thought it looked pretty good on its own though. So I think I'm going to leave it as is because I've kind of corrected the um, thickness of it. I thought about using like the tassel and stuff like that, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use the rope that came with it. It's long enough to wrap around. They had it stapled on there. I'm not going to take any chances with the staple gun and these thin signs. I'm just going to attach it with hot glue, reattaching it to the back here. Kind of in the same area that it was before, like an inch or two down. And just hot gluing that on the back. I think that's going to provide enough detail. But if you wanted to frame yours out with rope on the front, I think that would look really cute too. Or even along the edges. It's just going to provide another little texture detail to the sign, make it look better. But um, doubling up these signs, I think I'm going to do this more often. Definitely the way to go because it really made it so much better. I think it looks great like that. What do you guys think? Here, my little home shine with that seashell on there. Really pretty. Um, I think those wood, those wall charms also come in like sailboats and anchors maybe I don't know I've got them all you know I do <laughs> but this is how it turned out my little home sign super easy it looks so much better than it did when I brought it home so I'm really happy with that just a fun way that you can DIY this new home sign from the Dollar Tree Shore Living line Hey guys, have you visited my new website yet? It is craftybeach.net. It's my new website. Trying to get it set up as a blog. Kind of new right now. Um, but every time I post a video, I'm going to have a blog post. The great thing about this is that you can click on it. I'm going to have a link to all of the pictures of all the items that you can then pin 
on Pinterest so that you can remember my DIYs to make them. You can even find the corresponding video there for the tutorial of how I put it all together. I'm gonna have it kind of by season um, so you can find crafts. I even have a link to my Amazon shop so you can see the items that I recommend on Amazon and even a link to my Etsy store so you can get my really fun crafting printables um, to DIY with. Those are really popular. So remember, craftybeach.net. Be sure to check it out. It is my new website here on the internet. Okay, the next DIY, I picked up one of the beach rope signs. I love these, but I thought I could make it even better. So I'm gonna use a long sign. This is actually, I think, short living from last year, but it doesn't matter because you're not gonna be able to see any of it. I was hoping I could save the starfish pattern on there just by removing the sign that was on top because I wanna make this a base for my beach to make it a standing beach rope sign. But I was not happy because it ripped it and the pattern was actually on the sign. Isn't that kind of weird? I'll save the wish upon a starfish metal sign though because that's kind of cool. So it doesn't matter which one you use, any of them would work or any of the Dollar Tree craft wood would work too. You just want something heavy, flat, kind of skinny. I don't like the ripped paper on there particularly well. Um, so I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna kind of sand it down the best that I can, but half of it was like really stuck on there. So I'm just gonna kind of make that the bottom of it. But again, I don't like the way it looks. Um, I want it to, have more of a finished bottom. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm just gonna take some contact paper. It can be anything. Um, this is just like some wood contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to lay my sign on there, use an ink pen, um, sketch that out. As you can see, and <laughs> this contact paper has been through it <laughs> on my work desk. Um, but I'm just gonna cut that off and just a big sticker that's gonna make the bottom of this look better. And yes, this kind of looks cheap, but you know what? It looks better than that ripped paper on the bottom. So I'm just gonna peel and stick that there. And again, doesn't matter what pattern or anything cause it's gonna be on the bottom, but it did make it look better. I'm just gonna use my sanding sponge to get a perfect cut so you won't be able to see any of that in the final product. But I wanted a base so I could stand, stand up the beach sign um, and then kind of decorate it a little bit, make it look a little bit better. I do have this pesky sticker on there though. So I'm gonna remove that with just a Dollar Tree putty knife and heat gun. And then we can just paint and decorate this as is. That really didn't leave any residue. So that's good. Um, I, it won't be visible like with the painting and stuff like that. I'm going to use my favorite color by Apple Barrel, again, the cloudless color, and we are just going to paint the base of this. Doesn't have to look perfect or anything because I love that coastal farmhouse distressed look with my blues, but I wanted a blue base for this. Then we can attach the beach. The great thing about the beach being on the sign is that it's going to make it stand up really well and just a really fun way to use these signs. They also have the word relax home in love with shore living line this year but I wanted beach for this one that's probably the one I've picked up the most of because of course <laughs> and um I've made like rope letters like this before but if they're already made like this why not so I painted the top of it I'm also going to paint all of the edges and sides of it that blue color um and as you can see, that kind of raw wood kind of soaks it up, but you can make it look a lot better. So I just paint all of the edges. Once I get that looking so much better, then we can attach the beach word. And I also want to add like a little beach item. I'm going to use one of the sand dollars from those little wood beads that you see there from the Dollar Tree. They did bring these back again this year, and I love crafting with them. I don't really like the color of the starfish, so I usually paint that one, but the sand dollar is perfect. It's already white, and I love those beachy color beads that I can use those for another DIY. As you can see, I did have to use another coat because it really soaked up the wood there, at least on top, but the sides can look a little distressed. I'm fine with that. Now, the rope beach sign has a two hangers on it. 
I told you I always save these hangers. I've already used one um, earlier and it is because I can just reuse them. So I don't need them on the sign at all. So I'm just gonna use my screwdriver and remove that. It has the perfect wood back to attach it. I'm just going to clean mine up. The rope is a little fuzzy, so we're gonna burn off our fuzzies with a lighter. Trying to clean it up a little bit. Um, this step is totally optional, but whenever I work with Dollar Tree, the brown rope especially, I always like to try to burn off the fuzzies. And then we can stand it on the sign. Now, each sign's probably gonna be a little bit different. My rope on mine was not cut really well, like um, on the H's and stuff like that. I noticed that it was a lot longer. Um, so I am just kind of touching it up a little bit, making sure everything is glued in place. It is easy to read. And um, then I'm gonna trim off some of the excess rope there on the bottom of the beach word to make it look, um, to be able to stand up better. It was just kind of a little bit long down here, so I just trim up any of those letters. Just use some heavy-duty scissors to kind of saw through that rope. And then it will be out of the way. You don't want it to like um, kind of go to the side or anything like that. I want it to stand straight up. So wherever I think it's gonna come into contact with the sign, I just put a little hot glue there and glue this in place, kind of centering it on the sign trying to make sure that I got it on there even. And I went over to the left a little bit with my um, sign um, because I wanna leave a little bit of room there on the right for that cute little sand dollar. So easy peasy, it's ready to go. All I have to do is cut it off and attach it. Um, I um, think it looks better over on this side here. So I'm just gonna put a little hot glue on the rope and glue that in place. It's very lightweight, so it's really easy to attach it there. Um, and it provided the perfect like final touch to this little beach sign, I think. I did not really care for the edges of it though, um, the base. So I thought, you know, some of this burlap trim would be really pretty. I'm gonna use the zigzag one. I think any of them would look nice. I think burlap trim looks so coastal so I use it a lot in my DIYs. So I'm going to do a bead of hot glue along the front of the sign and just glue that in place. I'm going to wrap this all the way around so all of the base has that burlap trim on it just securing it with hot glue. We can have it meet up here in the back just to kind of make it look more finished make it go all the way around even here on the back. And these little touches like this can really take a simple DIY like this and just make it look way more high end. So just gluing that last piece in place and this DIY is complete. It was really easy to make, um, but I really love how it turned out. I could put this just about anywhere. It's not too tall and it's just a simple rope beach word cute little sand dollar on there with a coastal blue base with a burlap trim. Here is a close-up view. So you can see that that rope did clean up really nicely. And it's really easy to read, which is good because sometimes those rope words are a little sketchy. <laughs> Looking if you try to read them. Really fun. I really love how that turned out. It was so easy. Hey guys, um, I wanted to let you know that I have memberships here on my channel for $4.99 a month. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and it's just a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. You can cancel any time and I would really appreciate it. For the next DIY, I want to use one of these little wood signs from the Dollar Tree, but I wanted to see if I can make it into something. So I'm going to use one of the little wood crates from the Dollar Tree that's about the same size. They have these in sea turtle, octopus, and starfish, but I'm gonna be using the seahorse one. And they had these last year, but they've brought them back again this year. I'm just gonna remove the hanger from the back of the sign. Again, not even really gonna worry about the staple. I just wanna get all the fuzziness off this. I thought that'd be a perfect back for like a little mini planter. They're kind of small, so they're kind of hard to figure out what to do with. Um, too small for a wall hanging, really, I think. So I'm gonna use my favorite color of cloudless apple barrel here, and I'm just using a brush so I can paint the back of the sign, get in all of 
the little holes of this um, seahorse, it has lots of details. I'm also going to go ahead and do the frame as well, just because I want it all to be one color. I can always um, touch everything up and um, later, and I'm going to do white. So I don't want like a darker color underneath of it that looks a little bit sketchy. So I just go ahead and paint everywhere, I'm trying to get it as thin as I can. I don't want any of the paint like pooling up around the little cutout because they are definitely a little bit tricky to paint. So I'm doing mine with my seahorse, but this would be really cute to do with any of the four varieties for sure. So we have a nice blue background like that. And then I want to do the frame and the little mini planter um, box, the little flower box, white. Um, I love the blue and white together. I think it looks so classic coastal. So I'm just using one of those little sponge daubers from that paintbrush kit that I was telling you about at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just painting the frame white. As you can see, I'm going white over blue. So it does kind of show through a little bit, but that's going to make it look like a distressed white, which I like. I used the same um, stencil dauber, I guess that's what it is, to um, paint the um, seahorse as well, trying to avoid getting it on the blue background that I painted. If I could, um, I just cleaned up any excess with a baby wipe. And I'm also going to paint like the sides of the frame too, because you might be able to see those. We're going to use that same white color to paint the little planter box. They have a couple different varieties of this one. Um, I chose the one that was almost the same width as the sign. I know they have like a little bit of a smaller one now as well. Um, but as close as I could get it, that is the size that I wanted. And it has openings on the side, but for what I'm going to put in there, I'm going to do like a little succulent planner. I don't think it's really going to bother anything. I'm just going to paint the front and the two sides, what you're going to be able to see and like the top edge, because you might be able to see that all the way around, but I'm not going to worry about the back or the bottom. I mean, you could paint it if you wanted, <laughs> but I just want it white like that. I think that looks pretty good. And then since I kind of have that distressed with blue look with that white with the blue coming through on the frame, I thought I would just go in and distress it with that same blue cloudless color very lightly just to give it that coastal farmhouse charm. So just a very light dry brush with that. This Dollar Tree brushes, I go back and forth on those, those chunky brushes, they lose a lot of hair on like the little fibers a lot. <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I found a similar brush on Amazon. I haven't linked, I think, in my Amazon shop that seems to keep the little um, paintbrush fibers in there a little bit better. But I'm also going to distress the frame a little bit with that dry brush so it all kind of coordinates well together. Now it's time to put it together. There's not a lot of room to glue onto that um, wood frame. So I'm going to see if I can find a popsicle stick real quick here. Um, I think that's going to be a perfect way to kind of brace that on there and make it look a little bit better. So I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue here on the bottom of the frame, sit that on the crate, lining that up to the back, put more hot glue on the outside and then just lay my popsicle stick, which look at that, it fits perfectly. I thought I was gonna have to trim it down, but it was just the right size to go on the back of it to brace that and make it look a little bit better. Um, definitely um, makes it stronger. And I thought this was a fun way to use one of these little signs. Um, I was kind of at a loss when I bought these last year. I bought them because they were so cute. And then I was like, what am I going to do with these things? <laughs> but the little planter box, definitely a fun idea. Um, for the flowers, I'm going to fill it in with a little bit of floral foam first. Um, I'm going to do a couple of the succulents from the Dollar Tree that I've used one of them in like a previous DIY, so it kind of has the stem off already off of it, but I do want the box to be filled up. So um, I just cut those down to size. Then to cover up the floral moss, I'm just using the 
<laughs> to cover up the floral foam, I'm using the floral moss. It's kind of a brown color from the Dollar Tree. I've been having trouble finding the Spanish moss lately. Have you guys seen it in your Dollar Trees lately? I feel like I'm going to have to go over the beach and get me some real Spanish moss, but I might get some bugs that way. <laughs> so this is the blue succulent from the Dollar Tree. I just put that down into the floral foam. And this is another one of the succulents. Um, I've already taken the stem off of it because I've used it on previous DIY. So I'll just glue it on the floral foam by putting a little hot glue down there and just sticking that down in there. Um, I wanted to use like two different colors and... Um, I think they look really cute in there for a little planter box of succulents. So this is how it turned out, my little mini seahorse planter box. Definitely a fun way to use one of those signs. And I'll have to get creative because I have all the other ones too. And they are not all exactly the same size. So it's kind of hard to mix them up and make something out of them. They're all slightly different for some reason. Okay, the next DIY, I'm going to take one of the long wall shelves from the Dollar Tree and a package of the Shore Living Starfish, and I'm going to make a towel rack. Um, I thought this would be a really fun idea. The starfish are um, not super fragile, so I think this will work for this. I don't need um, any of the hanger for my shelf because I'm going to make this the plank that I hang on my wall to hang towels. I think I'm going to use this maybe in my Florida room. I haven't decided. I could use it in my bathroom too um, because I have towels that hang with the hooks, the ones from Target, and I think that would work well. I mean, I you could probably hang any towel. Um, it would work well for like your pool area. I have a hot tub outside, so um, I might use it out there. I'm not sure. I really like how it turned out though. I'm going to go ahead and paint it with that cloudless blue color for a fun blue base. I'm just gonna leave all the holes open in it. I'm actually gonna use those holes to hang it so I can hang it directly to the wall with screws to make it nice and sturdy and strong to be able to hold up the towels. I'm gonna measure, this um, sign's about 16 inches. So I did about eight inches and then um, five inches out on each side. And then I am going to drill holes. I decided I probably need to center these a little bit better so I'm going to make sure that they're centered this way as well. Because once I drill the holes in here, that's where they're going to have to go. <laughs> but I want to use a combination of the Dollar Tree starfish and the wood stems to make little, kind of like a kind of like a coat rack, I guess. But it's going to be like a towel rack. I'm using my power tools. I'm using a drill to drill a hole all the way through these so that I can screw from behind. And I'm also gonna screw from the front of the starfish and hopefully end up with a sturdy piece. I wasn't sure if this was gonna work, but it actually turned out pretty good. So I got my three holes drilled in that. Now I need to find three of the wood stems. These are from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just trying to find some skinnier ones. Um, that wouldn't stand out too much. That were all about the same length. Uh, I really don't think it matters. I'm just trying to find three that are similar, which can be a little challenging. I dump mine all out in these little bins from the Dollar Tree. Um, and kind of like a little scavenger hunt there. And skinnier, definitely better because the starfish aren't that great. So. I think this will work. I'm gonna go ahead and use that same drill bit to drill a hole in both ends of the wood stems because there's gonna be a screw coming from behind to attach it to the sign. And there's also gonna be a screw coming from the starfish side that's gonna attach the starfish for the front. So basically these are like spacers that's gonna kind of push the starfish out. And it was the best item from the Dollar Tree that I could think of that would work for this. Now I'm also going to have to drill a hole in the starfish. Um, they are made out of like, kind of like a plastic resin material. So be careful. You might need some extras if you get any of yours to break. But I just drill straight through the center of each one of my starfish. I'm going to leave them as is. They're white. They're textured. They're beautiful. 
Um, so just a lot of drilling there to get us started. I have some like random screws. I don't know if I got these from the Dollar Tree. I don't know. They're kind of in my stash. And I'm just trying to make sure I have some that are going to work. I have some like medium size ones here. I think these would be great to attach from the back. This sign's not too thick, so um, I just need something that's going to go all the way through and also go into the wood stem. So I want to get it just about right, right about there. Put my pre-drilled wood stem on there and it's wanted to kind of spin it. So I was using a pair of pliers to kind of hold my wood stem in place um, so it doesn't spin around when I'm trying to drill this in. But I, I think I kind of needed the power of my drill to be able to drill further into those little wood stems to make it sturdy. But again, holding them with the pliers seemed to help. Um, keep that from spinning around but then I realized that you know just a regular screwdriver might work a little bit better because I was having a hard time getting it like you know all the way in there might be a little bit too much torque with that drill so I switched to a screwdriver and um, I'm going to kind of go back and forth so I'm going to use this one to get it in there screw my wood stem on until it is super tight Again, using my pliers, that helped. And we have that part of this constructed. We have some construction here with the power tools. I try not to use them too much, but for this one, I think I needed them. <laughs> now for the front, I'm gonna choose three of the smaller screws and I'm going to screw this through. Um, I wanna be careful with the starfish. I don't wanna break them. So I'm just using a screwdriver and screwing that screw through until it goes all the way through. And then just screwing that into the wood stem. Now, yes, the screw is visible, but I am going to uh, disguise that. I'll show you how. So we have the first one screwed on there. Be sure not to screw them too tight. Mine cracked a tiny bit there. I filled it in with a little bit of spackle. I think it's fine. And then I'm going to be more careful trying not to screw the next two as tight. I don't really have like a countersink hole there. Nothing fancy here. Um, so the screws do kind of stick up a little bit. But that's fine. So I screw this one through my third starfish and attach that as well. So this is a decorative piece, but it's actually very functional, which I love. It's so cute. I think I might use this in my son's beach themed bathroom. I think it would look really pretty in there. And hopefully he'll hang up his towels when he's home. Now to disguise it, I'm just going to use spackle. This isn't ideal, but it's really the only thing I could think of. I guess you could also use some of the model magic in white. That might work actually a little bit better. Um, but I'm just going to do spackle and I'll just do it in coats because i got to make it kind of thicker. And I just went over all three of the screws, kind of filling in the top part of the screws. But as you can see, you can still kind of see them. So I'm going to have to add more. After I get it dried, I went in with another coat of that spackle and just kind of molding it with my fingers to make it look like it is actually part of the starfish. This is really important for the decorative element of the starfish, I think. And I do that on all three of them, trying to blend it in as much as I can and just following that up with my heat gun. You guys know I've been on a journey with my heat guns. I finally found one that I really like. I'll have to make sure that's linked in my Amazon shop. Um, it does such a good job. Now, I, you can still kind of see it. So I went in there with some white paint and I kind of want to distress my starfish with the white as well to kind of make it look like a couple different shades of white. Um, so I just paint over the spackle and I want to kind of seal the spackle on there so it's not like crumbly. I don't want it falling off because I'm going to have towels brushing up against this. And so I just kind of paint that little area in the middle and distress all of my seahorse to kind of make it all blend in. And they have a great texture on those little starfish, so I love the way that they look. And again, I want to just seal that spackle in there. I was a little worried about the spackle falling off, so I did seal it with paint, but I'm also going to seal it with a little bit of matte Mod Podge just to make sure 
that it is not going to go anywhere. Because it looks way better like that, I think. So I'm just going to kind of seal. I'm going to seal all the starfish just to make sure that you don't see any difference in sheen between the part that I sealed there in the middle and like the rays of the starfish. And I think that's enough messing with it. I think it turned out really cute. So I'm going to hang it directly to the wall with the holes that are on there. I don't think it really needs any more decorations. Um, it looks really cute as is. I did go kind of texture my spackle um, with a like cricket weeder to kind of make it look um, pitted like the rest of the starfish. And it was still um, wet enough to be able to do that. And this is how it turned out, my little towel rack. I will show you how I use it. I'm going to hang it up temporarily for you um, to kind of show it off. Um, but in the end, I'm probably going to end up using screws to attach that. But here it is. So it has like the little wood stems, perfectly spaces out. Um, I'm trying to think. You could probably also use the little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree for that if you can't find any of the wood stems. You just need a spacer to kind of push the starfish out a little bit to make it a functional rack. These are the towels that I was talking about that I use for the bathrooms and for the hot tub. They have the little hooks about halfway, so I thought that would be perfect. You can just hook that onto the starfish like that. Nice, functional, chore living DIY. And it actually looks pretty good with my blue towels there, right? I think this turned out so good. I was a little worried if I was gonna be able to pull it off, but I think I totally did. Thank you so much for watching. It's time for the final reveal of all eight of the Shore Living DIYs we made today. Be sure to like this video, comment below. Even if you're on a TV, if you could try commenting, I think that helps my videos do better. I'm trying to get these videos out and they're not reaching very many people right now. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Enjoy the final reveal. Dreamers of the shore
thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of today's video and I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my crafty beach bum members here on YouTube for supporting my channel. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C, and Lindsay. Your support means so much and it really helps keep these videos coming out. Thank you so much. If you'd like more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting and good luck with the short living finds.